Good morning, everyone. And um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's John Green. I'm the chair of One Nucleus, and, and I'm just going to give you a five-minute intro. Um, so today, two significant events are taking place. Firstly, there's the small matter of a general election. Um, I hope you've all voted or going to vote on your way home. Um, the realists amongst us will know there will be a change of government um, today, unless there's something the media is keeping from us, which I doubt. Um, you're all at the second most significant event of the day, so welcome to On Helix. So let's just get the elephant in the room out of the way, the election. Um, I'm not going to tell you who you should vote for, that's up to you. But um, this is what I've gleaned from the um, respective manifestos right before my eyes glazed over from boredom, having read them, some of them. Funding. The Conservatives say the party um, will uphold its existing promise to boost science investment to £22 billion by 2026, 27. Um, what they haven't said is the percentage of GDP that sum would represent. Um, they've recently changed the way that research investment is calculated, and so that part is really, really unclear. Labour is pledging to have research agencies, including UK Research and Innovation, the main public service funder, set spending plans that cover 10 years, which is really unusual, because that's longer than the three-year blueprints that any government usually commits to. Um, before they are in the throes of a general election or something like that. Um, and this will, and I quote, allow meaningful partnerships with industry to keep the UK at the forefront of global innovation. Uh, Labour stopped short of putting figures to those spending plans, which leaves researchers guessing somewhat on whether a Labour win will result in more or less money for science. Uh, the Liberal Democrats... Uh, by the way, I've ignored the Reform Party because um, I couldn't read their... I just wouldn't read their <laughs> manifesto. The Liberal Democrats offer the most ambitious science spending plan. The party, which has seen its popularity wane since it formed a coalition government with the Conservatives back in 2010, says it will up invest up to 3.5% of GDP and research and innovation by 2034 which, considering elections every five years, is quite an ambitious statement, I thought, um, but offers no other details whatsoever. On immigration, the manifestos do little to tamp down the fears of researchers that the next government will make it more difficult for foreign scientists and students to come to the UK. Welcome and the UK's Royal Society have called, the reduction of up -dump friends, called for the reduction of upfront fees that scientists seek to work in the UK that they pay for visas. But earlier this year, the Conservative government hiked migrant health care costs, making it more expensive to bring dependents and boosted the minimum earnings required for visa. So that's not really helping, is it? Both Labour and Conservatives say they want to reduce immigration. The Conservatives discuss further visa price rises. Uh, Martin Smith, who's head of policy lab at The Welcome, commented, um, that would be very worrying in terms of our ability to attract people to the UK in a comparison to other countries. Um, no surprises there, really, then. There are also pledges on climate change, but, hey, that's probably relevant for another meeting, so I won't go into that one. It's enough of politics for now. Your television will be saturated with it later, and by 10pm we'll all be fast asleep on the sofa, falsely thinking it would stay up all night to watch the results come in. Um, I've done it several times. So what's happening in the life sciences arena since I last spoke to you here? Uh, much the same, really. It's still a challenging financial environment, with investors seeking a very robust value proposition before they part with their cash. However, it's pleasing that some of our members, such as T-Therapeutics, Harness Therapeutics, Expression Edits, and of course our corporate patron, AstraZeneca, are proving resilient in their deal-making and growth by attracting these difficult-to-obtain funds. Uh, and we'll hear more from some of those later today. Cash remains king, of course. And whilst there have been some signs of green shoots appearing, it's not fast enough for many. And those who have funding are spending it wisely. The shortage of lab space that used to be a major issue and a major topic of discussion has waned somewhat, um, as vacant, vacant space has been available for the first time in some years uh, in the Cambridge and Oxford areas. Amongst all this news, One Nucleus continues to go from strength to strength with some major new initiatives in the last year, such as the Boston Boot Camp competition and our inaugural awards dinner, both of which have proved um, very positive in terms of feedback 
uh, and we're selectively looking at whether we um, repeat those events and when. We continue to build on these successes to create increasingly strong links with US clusters to enable our members to gain traction in the US markets. So far, we've held successful events both in San Diego last month and plans to return to Boston for their biotech week in September, and those plans are already reaching fruition. However, we're primarily a UK-based organisation, and whilst the building of links in the East and West Coast clusters is important, um, we continue to support our members in their day-to-day -day operations at home, delivering benefits via purchasing scheme, training, facility support, and of course the ever-popular networking events and meetings that we organise, such as this one. Um, our team has expanded to cope with the demand, and we hope that you all find our offer uh, beneficial um, to your efforts in growing your companies. Um, I'm going to conclude by thanking the One Nucleus team for all their hard work and diligence over the last 12 months. It's been quite a challenge. And just to say what a pleasure it is to work with them and what a privilege it is to be chair of One Nucleus and this great organisation. So um, I'm going to stop now, um, continue on with the main event, and I'm going to hand back over to Tony to kick the meeting off. Thank you very much. <laughs>